Hey there, friends. Thank you so much for listening to all 32 chapters of the Savoy Declaration. Wasn't that wonderful? I, I learned so much. I've been really enjoying studying these confessions of faith. Of course, I, I particularly love uh, the Second London Confession of Faith. And so going back now to the Savoy and seeing how these things, you know, sort of hand in hand around the same period of time were developed and written down, it's just marvelous. So in the copy of the Savoy Declaration that I have, that I've been reading from, there's a section, it's an appendix, it's called Of the Institution of Churches and the Order Appointed in Them by Jesus Christ. So I'm going to read that next. And this is divided into 30 paragraphs. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to read uh, six different sets of five, which will give us six episodes of this institution. And the institution is, is kind of like, um, you know, when I was a young man entering the ministry, oftentimes you would get for someone who was entering the ministry, uh, um, say, a church manual or a minister's handbook or something like that. And those little books usually contained, you know, ways to do, for, for, for example, a funeral or ways to do a wedding or the order of uh, a wedding or how to ordain deacons. Sometimes that would be in there, uh, how, to, how to start a church. I have a really old church manual that talks about how to start a church. So there would be lots of things like that, just sort of day-to-day administrative kind of things uh, and, and orders and outlines that you might not just ordinarily have. They would put it all in one little book and, and call it the church manual or a minister's manual. This institution is kind of like that. It's about the church. It's, it's answering the question really why the church and how the church, how the church should look, why the church exists, how the church should look, and what are the elements of a church. And what's the order of a church? It really kind of goes into all of those things. So without any further comment from me, I'm just going to go ahead and read today part one, which will take us down through the fifth paragraph. Of the institution of churches and the order appointed in them by Jesus Christ. Paragraph one. By the appointment of the Father, all power for the calling, institution, order, or government of the church is invested in a supreme and sovereign manner in the Lord Jesus Christ as King and Head thereof. Paragraph 2. In the execution of this power wherewith he is so entrusted, the Lord Jesus calls out of the world unto communion with himself those that are given unto him by his Father, that they may walk before him in all the ways of obedience which he prescribes to them in his word. Paragraph 3. Those thus called, through the ministry of the word by his Spirit, he commands to walk together in particular societies or churches for their mutual edification and the due performance of that public worship which he requires of them in this world. Paragraph 4. To each of these churches thus gathered, according unto his mind declared in his word, he has given all that power and authority which is any way needful for their carrying on that order of worship and discipline which he has instituted for them to observe, with commands and rules for the due and right exerting and executing of that power. Paragraph 5. These particular churches, thus appointed by the authority of Christ and entrusted with power from him for the ends before expressed, are each of them as unto those ends the seat of that power which he is pleased to communicate to his saints or subjects in this world so that, as such, they receive it immediately from himself. The end of part one. 